Okay, so we got our terrain all clamped up to the frame rack, and I'm going to show you how to pull it. Now we want to pull the frame rails back to the left. If I just hook some chains on it and start pulling, I'm going to bend the entire frame rail assembly all the way back to the cowl, which is the only place it has any support. So I'm going to put that ram on the inside of the frame rail where it is straight and pull against it to isolate my pole to the actual part that is bent. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Now, these frame rails can be sectioned and straightened slightly but not in the section where I'm straightening them. What I'm actually doing is an incorrect repair. And I'm doing this to show you that there are different ways to fix a vehicle. I can pull it over, get everything lined up and be done. But the next time it's in an accident, the strength of the frame rails is compromised. It's going to fold right up. After I get done fixing it the wrong way, we're going to fix it the right way. Don't leave me all the comments telling me that I'm doing this wrong because I know. I'm doing this to illustrate how to do some pulls, hopefully show you a little bit about pulling. But I only have a select number of cars to do this on, so I have to do it with stuff I'm going to throwing away. But you get the idea of how it works. Okay, so we got all of our chains on, and we're going to start our pull. You can see this is holding right here where our actual kink in the rail is. We're going to be pulling it here. If we just pulled against here without this, it would bend back at the cowl at the next strongest point instead of right here. The reason it bent right here was the subframe was attached down here and gave it some stability. But since we took the subframe out, it has nothing in there to support it for our pull. So we have to put in a temporary support, which is just our ram pulling the other way. I'm going to pull it in a little tighter so you can see it up close. The hammering is known as stress relieving. So when you pull it and you hammer it out and you release it, it takes the stress out of the metal and it doesn't go back as far. If I just pull it and let it go, it will still have some tension in it. So you're hammering out the tension. If you don't do that and we pull it all and everything lines up, the road is gonna do that for us as it's bouncing over potholes in the future. And our gaps will start changing and the front end will move around. So you want to do that in this stage before we measure so we know everything's going to be in the right spot. Okay, it actually looks pretty good. Unfortunately, because we straightened all of this, it is weaker here where this was buckled. So the next time it gets hit, it's going to wrinkle right up. So we're going to have to replace it. Even though it looks good, it looks to be deceiving. I could hammer that out a little bit more, but there's no need to make it perfect. I'm throwing it away. But I just want to give you an idea of what you can do by pulling. If this wasn't high strength steel, we could definitely straighten that out and it would be okay. But repair procedure on this is replace. This side, like the other side, we got our one ram holding here 
Actually, it's bolted where the subframe bolts were. So that's going to hold it tight here. And we're just going to pull this around. If you watch right in here, this is where the big kink is. You'll see it come out. So if you notice our rail, it needs to be rotated counterclockwise a little bit. It's not totally vertical like it should be. And that's because we were holding the bottom as we pulled it over. So it had a little more stability. It pulled at the top a little more. We could switch our pull around. So we would pull on the subframe mount to the driver's side of the car and hold on the top of the rail to the passenger side of the car. And it'll take that twist out of it. This rail also has to come forward. It was crumpled up a little bit. The rail went back when it hit the other car. And for that, we would just pull it straight forward. That's why there's still some pretty good kinks in the frame rail. But as we pull it forward, because this is high strength steel, it's gonna start to rip and tear. And that's why it needs to be replaced and can't be straightened. So I'm not even gonna spend any time on that. You're just gonna see me tear metal. The apron, where it's welded onto the rail, if you'll notice, it's starting to pull away. And that's because I'm pulling the rail and not pulling the apron. So there's no strength there. Uh, if I were to pull the apron over, it would close that gap back up. But we're cutting all that off anyway, so there was no reason to spend any more time on that. And a word of caution, right now if I were to measure it, that lower subframe mount would be pretty close to where it belongs. But as you can see, the top is not. So if we were to leave it like that and put it all together, we're going to have problems getting our front end to fit, even though the measurements on the bottom say that they're the same, which is why you need to use multiple measuring points. If you've got a used front end, it's always good to take some extra measurements that may not be provided in All Data or Mitchell or any of the measuring systems that you're using. Too many measurement points is never a bad thing. On this system, the car liner system, there's measurement points there for the front reinforcement bolts. So if I were to measure the top ones, I'd realize that that rail has got a little twist in it as the bottoms would be on and the tops would be off. And that would also tell me how far forward I need to go with it. But again, I'm throwing these away, so we're just going to get it close so you get an idea of what we're doing. So there you go. My first tutorial video in the books. How did I do? Which method did you like better? The live video and my explanations or the stills with the illustrations and my narration? I do plan on making some more videos on pulling. This was just kind of an overview. The pulling was only done to square everything up and make a video for you guys. I could have gotten away with just taking everything off and replacing it. But I only had two days to get this car welded back together, painted and drivable. So I couldn't spend a lot of time getting really detailed on straightening parts I was throwing away. In the future I can, so let me know what you want to see and I'll be sure to include some of that in the videos. If you're just starting out and you're thinking you can never do this because you don't have a frame rack, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You don't actually need one anymore. Frame racks are becoming obsolete and that's because manufacturers have designed everything to be replaceable. They don't want you to repair frame rails, they want you to replace them. And that's in an effort to make cars less repairable because when shops are charging $70 to $100 an hour, the labor to remove everything like the drivetrain and the dashboard totals a lot of vehicles. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you want to do all that stuff, it doesn't require any special tools. A welder is all you need to actually put the frame rail in. And any straightening that they do allow you to do can generally be done without any big tools. A come along, a slide hammer, different pulling devices like quick sticks, even a tree in your backyard will pull most of what you need out nowadays. Some methods are better than others and I'll get into that in the future. But the frame rack themselves, they're nice to have but not as useful as they used to be. On this car, the only part of the frame rack I really used was the measuring system. It could have all been done in a garage and you'll understand why when you see what I actually replace in future videos. And you'll understand why it was totaled. Well, maybe you won't understand why it was totaled because it wasn't total because of money. It wasn't total because of safety. I think the shop was just scared to do it because it was a big job. That's really the only reason I can see it being totaled. It definitely shouldn't have been. You'll see what scared them. Maybe you've already seen what scared them. So like this video if you found it helpful. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe if you wanna see more tutorial videos and some of my other projects. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.